This is how I'd use the simulation in front of a class so students can actually visualize the ampere as the unit of current and how current and amperes can then be measured using an ammeter. We'll also try to bring to life the two relationships charge equals current times time and current equals charge over time. It's easier if we have the show energy checkbox unticked. I'd probably introduce it by saying something like current is about the movement of charges. The faster the charges move, the bigger the current. An ammeter is what we use to measure current. So let's put one in our circuit. What value does the ammeter read? One ampere. What do you think would happen to the reading on the ammeter if we moved it round the circuit? It would stay the same. Let's see. The current is the same everywhere around the circuit. In real life, we have to disconnect the circuit, insert the ammeter, and then reconnect the circuit again. And this is called connecting the ammeter in series. We want to put the ammeter in the way of the current, so all the current flows through it. A cool thing about the simulation is that we can place the ammeter where it would be impossible to put it in a real circuit, like the middle of the filament of the bulb. What two things could we do to increase the current? We could increase the voltage of the power supply, or we could decrease the resistance of the bulb. An ammeter is a bit like a speedometer for charges. The faster the charges, the higher the reading. In fact, it's not quite as simple as that. What happens is that an ammeter measures the number of coulombs of charge passing through it each second. If one coulomb of charge passes a point each second, the current is one ampere. If two coulombs of charge pass a point each second, the current is two amperes. And if four coulombs of charge pass a point each second, the current is four amperes. What would the current be if three coulombs of charge passed a point each second? It would be three amperes. Each little black dot in our simulation represents one coulomb of charge. And the simulation is designed so that the charges move at about the right speed to represent the current shown on the ammeter. And we can use this to show two useful relationships. Charge equals current times time, and current equals charge over time. When we talk about the size of a current, we always have to remember that current is measured at a point on the circuit. Let's look at charge equals current times time first. This just says that the amount of electric charge that's flowed past a point depends on how fast the charges are moving, the current, and how long the time is. Big current for a long time means lots of charge. We'll choose the current and the time and we'll count the charges. We're going to choose a current of two amperes flowing past a point for five seconds. And for 2 amperes, I'm going to choose V equals 12 volts and R equals 6 ohms. Which means I can get to 3 amperes by simply reducing the resistance to 4 ohms. If 2 amperes flow past a point for 5 seconds, how many coulombs of charge pass? 2 amperes is 2 coulombs of charge passing a point each second. So in 5 seconds, 2 times 5 equals 10 coulombs of charge must pass that point. Let's check by counting the charges. It's easier to count if we put the ammeter over here 
and the stopwatch next to it. I'm going to time five seconds and count the charges passing the top of the ammeter. Let's hope it's near enough to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ah, bang on, that was pretty good. What about if three amperes flow past that point for five seconds? How many coulombs of charge pass? Let's adjust the resistance to make it three amperes, reset the stopwatch, and try again. Well, three amperes is three coulombs of charge passing a point each second. So in five seconds, three times five equals 15 coulombs of charge should pass that point. Let's check by counting the charges again. Just reset that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. There we go. Pretty good. So we have a useful equation. Charge flowing past a point equals current times time. So there, we used our simulation to calculate charge, but we can also use it to calculate current. We'll put the ammeter back and then use it to check our answer. We just count the charges that flow past a point in one second. The greater the charge that flows past a point in one second, the bigger the current. It would be difficult to time just one second, so how could we make it easier? Time 10 seconds and then divide by 10. OK, let's try that. As a teacher, we set the voltage to 10 volts and the resistance to 5 ohms. And that should give us a current of 2 amperes. Let's use our stopwatch to set a point on the circuit. We'll count the charges that seem to disappear behind it. How many coulombs of charge pass the top of the stopwatch in 10 seconds? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So 20 coulombs in 10 seconds. If 20 coulombs pass a point in 10 seconds, how many must pass in one second? It must be 20 divided by 10 equals 2 coulombs. If 2 coulombs of charge pass a point in one second, how big is the current? 2 amperes. Let's just check our answer with our ammeter. There we go. So we have another useful equation. Current flowing past a point equals charge divided by time. So that's how we can use the ammeter and stopwatch in our simulation to bring to life the two relationships charge equals current times time and current equals charge over time.